really exciting for me to be here today. Um, so I am based in Kingston Integrated Healthcare. Um, as Lisa said, I'm a Reiki and bioenergy practitioner, uh, which means that I work with uh, a person's energy, and the universal energy, and hopefully in 20 minutes time that will make more sense. Um, I just moved over from Ireland, so I was living in Ireland for 15 years, and I did all of my training over there. Um, and for quite a while, I, I had a very different career path. I worked in a university for many years. I, I did a PhD in marine chemistry and studied trace metals. And yeah, it, it was, that's a part of me too. You know, we're all capable of many things, and that was a part of me, and I enjoyed that for a while. Um, but I reached a point over there, um, about 10 years ago really was a turning point for me um, when I started to look for something, look for something more. Um, science wasn't everything, I always knew that. So I um, started to look for something more and started to do some training and slowly started to build a practice up over there. Um, and moved over here in the summertime in divine timing for Kingston Integrated Healthcare. Uh, which is a wonderful facility in town. There's 10 of us doing all different sorts of things. There's naturopathic doctors and acupuncturists and massage therapists and a psychotherapist and an osteopath and I'm sure I'm missing a few. Um, but yeah, we all work, work together to support um, people on their healing journey. So I, I, I love being there. I'm really enjoying it. Um, but I have not given a talk since I was a scientist. <laughs> so I think it was, I said to Lou and Lisa said, you'll be sitting down. I'm like, are you sitting? Because <laughs> I'm used to, of course, I gave many talks when I was, you know, in that world, but it was always kind of standing up and with a PowerPoint presentation. And so I, I, uh, I've let that go now, though. This is nice. Good. <laughs> and I do have, I have lots of, but don't worry, I will not be, this would not be very energetic what if I sat there and read like this. This is just to help keep me on track. Um, so today, anyway, what I want to say is just as we, I'm certainly not going to talk for an hour straight, that's not my intention. If I just talked solid, I probably would only be talking for 15 or 20 minutes. So within that, certainly you can interrupt and ask questions. Um, there'll be lots of time at the end as well for us to have a discussion. Um, but yeah, in keeping with what feels like the spirit of this place, it's all pretty casual and come as you are and there's no rules. Um, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so uh, I do need to start off with a little kind of disclaimer because even though I am a scientist by training and worked in that really that world of you know a question and evidence and you know results and an answer um, what I do now requires a whole different kind of intelligence that has nothing to do with that <laughs> really and I always kind of for me that was always there um, I was brought into the world with kind of an unquestioning um, connection I guess with the universe um, and when people I always enjoyed participating in discussions about you know the afterlife and you know is there a God and all these kinds of things and to me they always seemed sort of like well kind of a no-brainer like, yeah of course there's something more of course there is because I always I always felt that um, but having lived through that world where everybody's different right everybody works differently and some people some people like to have questions and proof and answers and that's perfectly that's perfectly valid but what I would say for today is my intention for the next 20 minutes is not to give you answers from me. So if you're looking for somebody to provide answers for you, you're definitely not going to get that from me. <laughs> what I would hope to do um, would be to support whatever part of you is, is journeying and is curious, support you in coming up with your own answers. Um, so that would be that would be a wonderful outcome if you left maybe finding some things in here that resonated with you that you could kind of take away and digest a bit and turn it around and make it your own. And if you come away with with only the feeling that none of that is for me, I didn't, you know, I'm not taking any of it on, that's totally perfect as well. Um, 
we're all on this journey together and there's room for everything. Um, so it, the, the one thing I did want to say as well, when Lisa asked me if it was okay if this be filmed today, I had this like, <gasps> oh, but that means I have to be right, <laughs> right? I have to be, I have to be right in everything I say. And it lasted about 30 seconds. And then I like shook it out. And what is, no, like how could, how could I possibly be right? That everything that I, everything that I experience, everything that I express is a result of, of how I have experienced things and interpreted them. Things that I have learned from other human beings and how they've interpreted them and how I have then interpreted them. And like we're talking about the universe at the end of the day here. So everything is all based on my own very human experience. So in actual fact, it's right for me, the things that I feel and that I say and that I believe. And again, whether or not it's right for you is entirely up to you. But that's also part of the disclaimer. So I like that. I'm not aiming to be right. <laughs> so it's okay if you get this on camera. <laughs> um, so as you, we're going to talk today about um, energy, but this is certainly where the English language falls a bit short, I think, because in my old life as a scientist, I worked in an environmental research institute, and I gave many talks on the subject of energy, but it wasn't this kind of energy. Um, you know, it was so, like, energy's a funny one, right? Like, we talk in barrels of oil, or numbers of light bulbs, or how many squats we can do at the gym, or how many calories in a Mars bar, like it kind of, it's a, you know, it's used to apply to, to, to many different things. And I think this is where other languages can be helpful. There isn't really, life energy is a pretty good one. I quite like the word chi, I use that all the time, so that was in the title of the talk, because chi is that, you know, it's that, it's that oomph that we feel. To me, anyway, that word expresses it, and maybe it's because I don't speak that language, so again, I've interpreted that's what it means to me. But that's probably the word that I'll use today to, to, when we're talking about this kind of energy, as opposed to watts or, you know, kilojoules or whatever. Um, the, the energy that we're talking about today in, in ancient traditions and in many modern traditions was associated with the breath as well. So sometimes a lot of the words that are used are very much tied into the breath um, and this idea that with each breath we're bringing in life energy and I quite like that image too. So what I would invite you even while you're sitting here and just noticing your feet on the floor and your bum on the chair and you know, just, just take time to notice your breath. And even if it's only just for these 20 minutes while we're sitting here together and maybe you're listening or maybe you're drifting off or maybe you're just comfy that you're always breathing. Um, so at least in that, in that 20 minutes, if what you get out of it is having noticed some of your breaths and drawing in more of that life energy, then that's wonderful. Um, I do need my word that I want to go next. Right, okay. We're going to do a little bit more with that actually because language is quite limiting. Um, what I do want you to do is just, just take notice of how you're feeling right now. Just see if there's one word for it or just, just take notice. going to ask you, we're, we're going to do a little exercise together. It will only be a couple of minutes, um, but what I'd like you to do is if you're sitting on a chair, just for that, I know it's like, I often sit like that too, just put your feet flat on the ground if you don't mind, just for the point of the exercise. Or if you're on the floor, just, you know, you can just snuggle your bum in a bit further. <laughs> Good. Um, so take a look at the people around you too and see what you, you know, just notice them, notice the room. So what I'd like everybody to do now, and if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. I'm just going to make a suggestion. We'll only spend a couple of minutes at it. If you take one hand and put it on your, just right in the center of your chest. 
And if you take your other hand and put it on your, on your belly button. And I'm going to guide you through three breaths. That's it. Um, again, if you don't want to do it, you don't, you, you don't have to. Um, but if it's okay with you, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. So on the first breath, on the inhalation, I simply am just going to ask you just to notice the breath. Just follow it in and follow it out. And you can do this for one or two more breaths as well. And on the next breath, I want you to Breathe into that space in behind your hand, your top hand, into your heart space. So just bring your awareness to that part of your body. Send the breath into there. And send the breath out from there. On your next breath, bring your breath down into your abdomen in that space behind your hand on your belly. Just send your breath into there and out from there. And before you open your eyes, you can put your hands on your lap and I just want you to again notice how you're feeling now. Maybe it's the same, maybe it's different, just notice. And gently open your eyes and look around the room and just notice the other people in the room too. It feels a little bit different, doesn't it? It's okay if it doesn't. It does to me, but maybe I'm looking for it. <laughs> um, in dropping into that, into that space, just simply paying attention and dropping out of, we spend so much time, especially um, studying or working in a university, so much time up here, right? And if I were to just to, to, to do a, um, a modern dance movement, it would probably look like this. Yeah, that this is the way the energy feels a lot of the time. It's kind of, it's up here. It's quite heady. <laughs> and when we take a minute to drop out of that and come into our bodies, we drop into closer to that, that Thing that connects all those parts of us. It connects our minds and our emotions and our bodies, and it's our energy space. And just that was a very short little exercise, but if you felt a little bit more um, in your space, a little bit more accepting of where you are, a little bit more accepting of the people around you, when I do that, what I observe is that I feel a little bit less like this is me and that's them. I feel a little bit more like, oh, this is, this is us and we're all, we're all okay. And it's from that, it's from that place that I work from as an energy, as an energy therapist. That place that connects all of those things, all of those other parts of us, the mind and the body and the emotions, but that also stand separate to them. Um, So, page three. <laughs> what's on page three? Oh, yes. That's what's on page three. So this energy stuff, right? What is it and where does it come from? So I'm going to use the word chi. 
Um, so it's said that we're all born with a certain amount of chi. We can increase or, or cultivate this chi by the nourishing foods that we eat and the nourishing activities that we, that we undertake. Um, people that talk about energy, you probably see it all the time. And maybe, are there any scientists in the room? Former scientists. Former scientists, <laughs> all right. High five, former scientists. <laughs> So I, I don't know if this, I don't know if it annoys science, but having been a scientist once, I, I still use this and it makes sense to me, but I, I, I do like that old E equals MC squared, you know, Einstein's view of the universe, because what it tells us is that energy and matter are interchangeable. Um, and one concept that I really like is that matter is energy, the, the vibe, energy vibrating at a slow enough pace to come into solid form. And I quite like that concept makes sense to me both as a scientist and as a non-scientist and it may or may not to you. Um, but you know in, in, in science sometimes physics as well you know the laws of physics I think say a lot too. And I'm going to do a little demonstration with this pen. So we have who everybody did physics at some maybe you didn't do physics at some point. Maybe you did? Okay. There's all, you know, the, the idea is that energy isn't lost, it changes form. But there, there's a constant amount of energy, it never goes away, it just changes form. That's what physics tell us. So in this, in this idea here, so I'm using mechanical energy to lift up this pen, right? It gets a certain amount off the floor, and the mechanical energy is now potential energy because of the gravitational force. So there's, there's energy contained within this pen that when it's dropped, becomes what they call kinetic energy. So they're all different kinds of energy. It just changes form. And I like to, I'm gonna take this one little step deeper. I have my, I meant to bring a, a patchwork blanket with me today, but I forgot. So I like that idea too. I like that, so this is the universe, okay? Represented in two dimensions, which of course it's like five or six, or I'm not sure, seven, I'm losing track. Up to 11 these days. Is it 11? <laughs> okay. Anyway. I have no. <laughs> we'll go with the scarf. So this is the universe, right? This is the energy of the universe, all the potential of the universe. So the way I kind of like to think of us, and I didn't make this up, I, I have absorbed this and made it my own from somebody else, is we are all kind of like pinches on this piece of fabric here. Let me see if I need to spread this out. So I'll put, there's my, there's me, right? There we go. Well, Lisa, you're in here too. And we got Erica. Right? So we're all like pinches on a blanket. And we even, everybody's there. Everything is there in the whole universe. Donald Trump is, maybe he's <laughs> out here. And there is no wall that can separate him, that can keep us away. Maybe not, he likes it. But what you can see in that is that we, we're, all, we're all connected. We're all connected to something bigger. We're all connected to each other. And again, it's on that concept that I, that, that I work, this idea that, yes, I am a pinch and I have this set amount of chi that is me in this kind of slightly surreal expression of universal energy that is the human form. Um, but I'm connected to everything else. And I guess quite importantly for my human existence, I'm connected to the universe and all that it all that it has to offer in all of its abundance. Um, but we can just, now I've lost a piece of, let me make sure that wasn't an essential one, where did that go? No, don't need that one. Phew. <laughs> 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 I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You can try to tell me something. Yeah. <laughs> but let's just say if that if that all feels like you know one concept too many, we can just stick with the idea for today that you know I got my energy, you got your energy. We all have our own little bundle that we were allocated, and you know what do we get to do with this wonderful bundle for our time on Earth here? 
So, I mean, what I really wanted to talk to you about was the importance of keeping our keeping this energy in flow. And what happens when it doesn't flow? Because where I work from in the clinic is on the basis that, again, it connects all those parts of us. So underneath every physical, emotional, mental distress is an energetic imbalance. And I would say my position is that that, is, that underlies everything. That's, that's my position. That's the basis on which, on, which I, on which I work. So, yeah, this is where I wanted to go. So what happens when it stops flowing, right? What happens when it stagnates? When for whatever reason, this energy that we're meant to be bringing in and exchanging with the universe, and yes, we have our certain amount, but we absorb things we don't need. We need to get rid of it. We need to bring in good stuff to keep things moving, to help us digest our food, etc., etc. <coughs> So what happens when it stagnates? The body tries to tell us. So first of all, it tries to tell us energetically. And for people that spend a lot of time um, with their energy bodies, and that can be that can be meditating, it can be gardening, it can be painting, it can be anything where you're with yourself. And again, from my perspective, is being with your own being with your own energy. When you, when you spend more time doing that, you may notice straight away if something's off, you know? Maybe you're an avid painter, and you wake up one morning and you just lost it. You're like, where's my, where's my flow? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what to do next. I don't know where to go. You know, or you're, you have a green thumb. You talked about gardening. And, uh, you know, the, the seedlings you plant aren't thriving. And, what, you know, what's going on? I don't know what to do with them. And normally I'm talking to them, and I know what's going on. So the body tries to tell us, right? If we don't pick it up then, it goes to another level and the body tries to let us know. And it tries to let us know in many, many different ways. And sometimes we feel things emotionally like, oh, if I look at that, I'll probably cry or we might get a rash or, you know, we always have like, our knees give us pains or um, we go into mental kind of anxiety, mental turnover, which often happens <coughs> when there's an, if this is our, um, it's kind of a bit of a protector, I guess, really. If there's too much going on in our body, sometimes our minds kind of over-engage. And that's a, that's a protective mechanism as well. In traditional Chinese medicine, I'm going to talk about the emotions there because I think that's the biggest one. And I think, again, this is somewhere where language kind of doesn't really have the right word for it. In, in traditional Chinese medicine, the, the, the organs are receptors, the organs in our body um, are receptors for different kind of suppressed emotions. So different organs have a different inclination to hold on to certain emotions. So it's said that grief lodges in the lungs, unresolved grief. And you may have felt yourself or witnessed somebody else that loses a pet or a loved one and then gets you know, a bout of bronchitis or pneumonia, or again, that's the lungs trying to actually do their, helping you do their job, helping you to, to clear and resolve this grief. So that um, anger is, uh, unresolved anger gets lodged in the liver. So like that expression of a person being full of bile, like that's where that, that's where that comes from. Um, fear lodges in the, in the kidneys. So that's, a, that's a, a very ancient viewpoint of it, and one of which feels real to me too in my experiences of it. So again, that link when we're talking about energy, it's, a, it's funny because so much of it is emotional too. I, I don't, there's not the right word for it in there again, I don't think. And in working with people, I've worked with many different people on different levels to help them with different um, different things that they were trying to work through. Um, chronic uh, or recurrent urinary tract infections, autoimmune stuff, headaches, um, anxiety, depression, um, um, muscular um, and skeletal pains. So all of those respond to, to energy work. And in working on those places with people, Sometimes the energy just needs to do its thing, do its thing, but quite often emotions come up for people. Um, and in my own journey, one I guess one of the reasons why I am here now is because I got very, very sick about ten years ago, um, and I could feel it. My my chi, I was like a stagnant river, was the way it felt. And I was diagnosed with a disease that I was told I would not recover from. 
And I thought to myself, that's not true. <laughs> and um, so set about what, you know, looking at what needed to be done. My physical body was screaming at me. And if I had have been listening, I would have caught it much sooner. But as soon as my physical body screamed at me like that, I knew exactly what was going on. All the emotional stuff that um, I had been in a toxic environment for quite a few years. And there was a lot of emotional distress had accumulated that when I left the toxic environment, I just went, woohoo! <laughs> and I didn't deal with any of it. <laughs> so my physical body was screaming at me to face it. So that's what I set about doing. And the first experience I had of, of energy work really was when I flew from Ireland to Canada to lay on my mom's Reiki table. I just, I was in complete crisis. And after about two or three minutes of her working on me, it was like I had been plugged into a socket. I have since never experienced anything like it, but I think it's only because my, my whole energy had reached such a point of stagnation. And literally, whatever she did released the flow and the energy surged through my body. I was shaking from head to toe. I was totally electrified. At the time, I didn't, well, I did understand what was going on. It was a bit scary totally electrified and you know, I, I wasn't instantly healed but it was a <clears throat> big turning point for me I then had to do my emotional work and I had to heal my physical body it had suffered a lot from having held on all that stuff for so long but since then to some I've worked with a few people a handful of people who reached a similar point of stagnation who've had similar experiences when the energy starts to flow again for most people it's it's they don't get to that point, thankfully. <laughs> and it doesn't happen quite so um, powerfully. It's more gentle. But you can be guaranteed that if you go for energy work or if you enter into a journey yourself and open up to whatever is available to you, you will get whatever you need whenever your body is ready for it. That was what my body, I needed to be saved. And that was what I, that was what I needed. Uh, but that was a real turning point for me because I had such a visceral experience. So maybe the scientist was there. I mean, I always knew, I always felt it, I always had that connection. But that was an unbelievable visceral experience. And it was from that moment that I went, okay, I'm, I'm dedicating my life to a different, to a different journey now. Can I ask a question or later? Yeah, of course. It's quite amazing that you experience here. I know a lot of people have different pressure where they stay or the, what's, you know, Students, I think all the students who come and listen to you know, <laughs> you speak. And, but uh, do you think that relationship, like friends, when you have under such a, uh, no, not a tunnel, no, no, uh, no friendship, or boyfriend, girlfriend, or is that a way? Do you mean with the differentiation of support? Is that what you mean? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I mean, I mean, especially, um, now, I, this isn't fair to say especially for women. This is a generalization, okay? Mm -hmm. But we're, we're pretty, we, one of our strengths is our, is our ability to um, communicate on an emotional level. So I think for, if that, if that answers your question, so much can be done energetically processing by talking to somebody about it. And sometimes by, by it's not even, it, it's having a person to listen. So we can do so much for each other by providing a non-judgmental listening space. And that's energy work, if that's your question. That is, that shifts, that shifts mountains, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes, and, and this is, sorry, I interrupted you. Were, you. were you finished there, yeah? Yes. yes. So is your point for, for family as well, to support each other like that, is that what you mean? Yeah. yeah. Completely. And I guess some of us are blessed in that we were born into our families that also happen to be our friends. But for others of us, our friends are our families that we choose. <laughs> so, you know, yes, we're, we're born into, into a family structure, and sometimes that supports things staying in flow in our bodies, and sometimes it doesn't. Everybody's doing their best all the time, but 
for some, it, sometimes it just doesn't always work. And sometimes it can be those family environments that create that stagnation in our bodies. And that was where, um, um, that was where I wanted to go next. Um, you know, how does it get, how does our energy get blocked up in the first place? And we've kind of touched on this. And sometimes a physical trauma results in an energetic trauma. So an accident, right? That can result in an energetic um, blockage. More often in my experience, what I witness, it is those unprocessed emotions. It's those things that we accumulate. It's the traumas, maybe that never even got to an emotional level, but those traumas that we experience throughout our lives that aren't fully processed. And sometimes they're not even ours. Sometimes we witness things. Sometimes we absorb things. There's a lot of highly empathetic people in the world that should not read the newspaper. <laughs> okay? Because a lot of very empathetic people really absorb those things. And if you read the newspaper and you come away feeling really sad, you should consider how often you read the newspaper. Because you may not be doing anybody any good by feeling their sadness for them. Yeah? But sometimes that's a part of what we accumulate. Sometimes we accumulate things and we don't even know why. So sometimes we live in an environment or in a community where other people have stuff going on that they're not processing and we pick up on it. Or on some energetic level without knowing why, we take it on and we're very good at this with our families. Um, anybody who has children will, will know that we do it a lot for our children. And again, if it were a modern dance movement, it would probably look like this. <laughs> yeah? Like, like here, oh, take my heart and give me your stuff. <laughs> right? And we, we'd like, take it and I'll deal with that. <laughs> And this is, this is, you know, part of this is, is, is natural. And as a mother myself, I struggle with that separation because in some ways by we're not doing that other person who also has all of the wisdom of the universe inside them any service by presuming that we need to do their stuff for them. And that's a really important point as well because when we do empathize, sometimes we think that the best thing we can do for another person is to feel it with them or feel it for them, go there with them, come away with our hearts in pieces as much as theirs are in pieces, yes? But... So I, I just have a question mark over that. Not that I, I can't say because everybody has their own experience, but that is a, that's a, re, a, a repeated um, behavior that in one way we're taught, that's almost that we're, we're not really taught um, proper listening skills just to simply hold a space for somebody else and let them feel their own stuff. We're, we're taught something different that is more about exchange that may or may not always be healthy. So these things, anyway, and sometimes we're, anyway, sometimes we bring in stuff, and you don't have to buy into this if you don't want to, but this is my feeling and my experience. We bring in stuff from um, unresolved stuff from our spiritual or our ancestral lineage too, and you don't have to buy into that if you don't want to. <laughs> anyway, point is, we got stuff, right? I mean, in an ideal world, when we feel things, when we're traumatized by something, when we have a trauma, we are supported lovingly to go there and to process it, whether that means crying, screaming, reflecting, you know, seeking solitude, seeking company, whatever it is, we're supported so that that experience is digested and the waste is released. But it's like a full, like, like the way we digest our food. We need to be able to digest our experiences. But again, we don't live in a support structure where we can often do that. And having gone through, I recently lost somebody um, in my family and felt as I always do a lot of things. And it was interesting to observe other people's reactions to that, that, you know, that, you know, that, oh, be strong. And, oh, don't cry. Don't cry. It's okay. Don't cry. And lots of things like that from very well well-meaning people. That's a well-meaning is one of the worst words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it, but it, but it is from. But in a way, it's one of the like they, the best of intentions, really. Mm. But it wasn't like what I what I needed somebody to say was cry, like scream, feel, 
and it's okay and I'll hold you. But we don't know how to do that. And this is your question about friends is, a, is fundamental. And you're absolutely right. We can do so much for each other by just holding that space for other human beings. And, okay, so, we got stuff. <laughs> 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 so what we're going to do now in a couple of minutes is we're going to do a few fun things that we can do for ourselves to kind of help us move through our stuff. Um, and I still seek, like I do this all the time with myself. I work on myself all the time and I still need help. Last week we have a beautiful um, practitioner in the clinic who does cranial sacral work. And I knew I needed somebody to hold space for me. And it was him and it was exactly, I couldn't do it for myself. I'm too... I, in, in the end of the day, I'm having a human experience and I'm very attached to my human experience. <laughs> There's only so much I can do for myself. So again, sometimes if you need that extra help, it's knowing when to ask for it, when to seek it. And reaching out and asking for help, sometimes even just the very act of it, starts things moving. Because it's, it's acknowledging that there is support in whatever form, in whatever form it comes. Um, the final thing I want to mention as well on that note, because of where we are, sometimes traumas don't have to be traumas. Minor little slights happen all the time. And again, if left undetected, they can accumulate. So in a university environment, and having worked in one myself, I speak with some authority from my own experience, but the one that most that springs to mind really are the traumas associated with hierarchy and with perceived superiority. So whether that's to do with gender or age or title or research funding or, you know, whatever, you know. But those, those sometimes those little, those little behaviors, and this is where um, we have to be aware of the things that make us feel good and the things that don't. So even if it's little, if it makes you want to pull away from it, if you feel like you would run away from the person or the place or the energy, if you could, then run away. <laughs> <laughs> or don't go there again. Mind yourself. You know, be really, trust that feeling of like, you know, like walking into this building. Oh yeah, this is good here. <laughs> Everybody feels that. There's expanse and there's, but walking into a place, if you want to go like this, it's probably not a good place to be. Does that make sense? And that could be the simplest, absolute simplest viewpoint of the energy of the universe. It expands or it contracts. Um, <clears throat> okay. All right. So, are there any questions on that yet? And we'll have, I want to spend the next few minutes that we have together kind of doing some fun stuff. Are there any questions? Does anybody have anything they want to input on what we've talked about so far? Yeah. Um, I was in a toxic work environment, therefore the change okay. of career and everything. But I started doing Tai Chi a few years ago. Oh, and as I learned it, I was all stressed out the Western way, way of Eastern versus Western, trying to worry about being perfect. But once I did learn how to do it by myself, I do it at work before I start working my afternoon break. But we have a coworker who also does Tai Chi. And when we do it together, we say the room is like filled with Chi, 10 times more than each of us doing it separately, but doing something together. It's just the most amazing feeling. And we just like, I can now deal with whatever is on my plate for the rest of the day because of us both stopping and, and doing this thing together. So it's a, a cumulative Chi, we call it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to share. Oh, lovely. Thank you. I think that's a really, really good point. Thank you. Mm. Exponential chi. <laughs> mm, yeah. Oh, to the hallway where everyone else needs it too. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of that. It's like chi factorial. What is that? You know, when the numbers just keep getting, you know, when one plus one doesn't actually just equal two, it equals exactly. ten. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I must sometimes, um, I would say to a friend, if, if they were in distress, and I say, just phone me. We can cry together mm -hmm. on the phone or we can shop together. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? Pick up your phone and phone me. Mm -hmm. And I can really cry with you if 
you want me to do that, but we can just ask a big laugh as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I love I love doing that for, mm -hmm. for other people. Perfect. So what's your phone number? <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> One should say something like in a group like this, three o'clock every afternoon for five seconds just to start laughing. <laughs> you yeah. will know this all over the place. There's others doing that with you. Yeah, totally. Then that's great. And that's if 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 even you just sharing that now it's like we need we just need it we just need a new language a different way of doing things because that's exactly it you know either reaching out for help or reaching out to offer it you know reaching out and offering to hold that space um, yeah perfect Thanks, you mentioned Anna. painting before yeah. I'm, I'm a painter and I'm very secluded yeah. and sometimes I just can't do it but there's, there are some places you can drop in in town where there's a bunch of mm -hmm. um, people just sit and doodle and mm -hmm. things like that. And it just mm -hmm. blooms. Mm -hmm. And you come up with the most interesting things that you didn't even know were inside of you. Mm -hmm. And it's it's very therapeutic as yes. well as... I've dealt with um, art therapy for the, with the Alzheimer's Society too. And when you're together, it's just, it's a very healing process. Mm -hmm. But you, But the... You, like I said, there are things inside you you have no idea that are there, but with the, the, everybody doing it, it just blossoms. Mm -hmm. Nice. Where is that? That you can do that? Where can you oh, sit in those Oh, some of the spaces? soup kitchens and churches in yeah. town. You yeah. can drop in, and they, um, St. Andrews has art supplies down there, and St. George's on certain occasions. You have to yeah. sort of duck sometimes if some of the stuff is going on in there. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few places you can drop in and, and do that. So. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Would you comment on any sort of easy exercises or physical body movements that we can all do to help the energy to flow? You're talking yeah. about the psychological emotional, which of course is huge and we don't have time to address it, but maybe you have like three quick movements we can all do every morning or something like it's that. It's like I planted you in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's exactly where we're going. So <clears throat> what I want to, but before we go there, there's a little bit of jargon that I want to um, just touch on quickly about energy in the body. Um, and these are things that you can look into at home or I'm running a class. There's little flyers on the table if you want to come along to a class I'm running on April 4th. Or you can read. There's tons of free stuff on the internet. Or, you know, you can seek information from each other. Um, so, auras, meridians, and chakras. You guys kind of heard some of those words, yeah? Mm -hmm. Our aura is like the energetic extension of ourselves. Yeah? We have an egg around us. Mm -hmm. A really great exercise, really simple exercise, mm -hmm. is just visualizing your aura and strengthening just with that visual intention, especially in an environment like this where you can feel kind of invaded by other people's stuff and what's going on with them. Strengthening that aura um, will really help with your help with your boundaries. Our chakras are, we have chakras all over the place, but the main ones are along the center line of our body and they're kind of like these primary points where we exchange information um, with the universe and they have different vibrations so they they are they're all connected to different systems and different organs in our body um, but again learning about the chakras and working on that level can help you if there's specific things that you that you want to work on um, you know, the, so you know there's the heart chakra if you know that there's some work you need to do there the solar plexus chakra is really linked in with our digestion so learning about the different chakras and working on those levels and again you can there's lots of information available out there it can help you work on those different systems the meridians in our body they're like inside our body they're like the energy highways in our body and acupuncturists work a lot along these meridian lines that's the foundation of their work and this is, even though energy is moving through us all the time, there's specific pathways of most used flow. But again, knowing where the meridians run can help you see, 
Um, a few weeks ago, I had a rash along my spleen line. So it's like, oh, that's interesting. So I worked on my spleen. <laughs> so, you know, knowing where the meridians are can help you tune into what's going on, going on with your body. And lots of different techniques for working yourself. Acupuncture is an amazing tool, but lots of different techniques for working on yourself to work on those meridians. And now, is it, okay, everybody ready? If we have six minutes, which is perfect. Everybody want to, can you, okay to stand up? Yeah? Okay. So we are going to do. I'll know when we're up. Yeah. Okay. One of the best things you can do for yourself is stop taking yourself so seriously <laughs> and everything that's going on. And one great way to do that is to shake in your body. The camera's going to like that. <laughs> is to shake your body. And there's something about shaking, I do this a lot, that frees things up. And doing it with a group, you were talking about too, but both of you spoke about doing things with a group. It increases, I used to shake with a group in Ireland, we would shake for an hour. And the chi in the room was incredible. And spontaneous laughter would erupt and tears and all kinds of things would erupt. But for the moment, because we don't have an hour, what I would encourage you to do so that we can stop taking ourselves and each other so seriously is just make some silly noises. <laughs> 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 and in a university, again, like the university needs this. <laughs> so much. Just people that know how to not. Nobody wants to be serious, even the ones that really act like they do. Nobody wants to. So you can take that back to work with you. <laughs> so. I'm well when my AVP meets the new provost on Thursday. surprised. So the next thing I'm going to show you is just about how to grant, again, Energy tends to go up here, especially in this kind of environment, if you can learn how to ground yourself. And one of the easiest ways to do that is by standing. So a great way to stand, if you put your feet about shoulder width apart, and take your, take your tailbone and, and, and tuck it under. So it's like you're tilting your pelvis slightly forwards. It doesn't have to be too exaggerated. But when you tuck it in, your knees will probably soften. And did you notice you just feel, do you feel the weight of your body now on your legs? And that woman who does Tai Chi, is she back there still? You know, this is, this is a, a, a martial arts stance, really, because the most important, um, one of the most important elements of people that practice martial arts is knowing where power comes from, right? And you see it comes from here. This is where... I, I have my yellow belt in karate. <laughs> what we learned again, where we learned was to put. This is where this is where the power comes from, from this part. So standing like this, hands on your thighs, and if you take your chin and kind of just put your chin back, just so it's not. You know, if we look at computers all day, we'd stick our heads out like this. But even just this, and breathing in to to your to your center. So right down into your tummy, even just three or four breaths, it just drops you right back into your body. And you can do this when you're standing in a line, when you're waiting for somebody. You can do it even when you're sitting down at your desk. I'd encourage you to put, every now and then, plant both feet on the floor and take a few good breaths. So from here, we're going to play with our chi for a minute. Okay? So everybody, clap your hands together. Rub them. And this just helps. We always have chi, but this will just help us to feel it a little bit <coughs> as we bring our awareness to the palms of our hands. 
Now, this could be hard to grasp in 30 seconds, but we're going to try it. So, take your hands and put them about this far apart or closer or further. Just notice the palms of your hands, the sensations that are there. And move your hands gently kind of back and forth or in little opposing circles to each other. And just see if you feel anything. If you don't feel anything in the palms of your hands, don't worry about it. I've been doing this for like 10 years. <laughs> but you may, you may feel something there. Is anybody getting anything? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does it feel like to those of you that, can, that have felt it? Ball of energy. Yeah. She said a ball of energy. I thought it was a little electrical impulses. A little electrical impulses, yeah, little shooting things. What did you say, Jenna? Yeah. Yeah. To me it feels like two opposing magnets when I when I do like two opposing magnets. And you can sometimes feel it more viscerally if you if you kind of try and push your hands. So with this now. This is a great way to start off any self-healing exercise. When I work um, with people therapeutically, I use my hands. I work in the energy field around their body, but I work on their body too. And I work on the premise that my hands are concentrated um, universal energy force. Yeah? And even just with that, now even if all you know to yourself is there's something there and it feels kind of good, right? Call it what you want, call it energy, call it love, call it chi, call it what you want. You take those hands and put them anywhere on your body that's calling for attention. And if in doubt, the heart is always a good place or the, anywhere in the abdomen. And if you, um, if there's emotions there and you, you're doing this, you may, you tend to feel more whatever is there. So you may feel, you may feel emotions there. Or you may just feel ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, everybody. Oh, there's um, a couple of things I wanted to say. I have... I don't know if I have enough, but I can quickly do them up. I have my, my business cards here. So, I mean, energy works funny. I do have to charge for what I do, which is <laughs> I wish I could just do it for free. But anyway, but on the back of this is $15 off your first consultation. But we all do free. If you want to come in for a chat, you're welcome anytime. That's free. You can come in. We can talk. You can see if there's something in it for you, if it's somebody else in the clinic. Everybody in the clinic does free consultations. But I'll pass these around so you can take one um, if you want to come in for a treatment um, anytime. I'm doing a class on the 4th of April. There's some flyers there. Um, and I'm sticking around for a while if anybody has any questions. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.